That yeah, was a like, great, like, great intro. That's <laughs> like a good cheesy theme song, right? I love it, dude. That's Go good. Ahead. I am uh, so excited to welcome uh, someone I can genuinely call a friend and someone who I've really loved watching them grow up, kind of literally, and also grow as an artist. Um, it is uh, my, you know, he, of course, you know him from this little show on Netflix called Sabrina. Uh, but the pinnacle of his career was doing our very first show for 3D Theatricals ever in 2009 and Peter Pan, uh, as well yeah. as doing our damn Yankees and then saving the day as a swing for us and literally went on saving the day uh, in Joseph before he went off to do uh, this little show called Sabrina. So anyway, please welcome to the room Mr. Gavin Motherwood! Thank you for having me in here. Super happy to be here. Yeah, man. Oh, I'm so excited to see your face. Um, first of all, too, how have you been during this craziness? You all good? Yeah, I've been keeping busy and also like being okay with not being busy. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, I, I could see how like a lot of people could you know, get a little um, stir crazy feeling like there needs to be stuff to do, but it's also okay to like relax and take time for yourself and uh, slow down and, you know, sort of look introspectively and at the self. Get some time with family and all that mm -hmm. good stuff. Um, before we actually move on, I do want to say um, we have had uh, some in other sessions, some beautiful and amazing mega fans who tend to, uh, uh, be amazing and send their love, but they will unmute themselves. And we just ask if you could please keep yourself <laughs> muted so that we can get to all the fun and exciting questions. And if you do have questions, post them in the chat. We'll try to incorporate them into the interview. And there will be two lucky people that will get to ask a question live towards the end of this interview. Okay, so um, uh, first of all, Gavin and I met, um, actually it was through family, we uh, are, I'm, I love to call Miss Kathy Rigby a friend because she is just un an unbelievable uh, woman. And, um, and uh, she has an unbelievable sister uh, who happens to be Gavin's mom. And uh, we met that way, um, kind of through family. And um, Gavin is uh, much, oh, by the way, Gavin, I was talking with Bronson Pinchot. Um, we were texting um, and I was like, oh yeah, Gavin's coming, because he's going to come on. Um, and I was like, oh yeah, Gavin's coming on. And um, he's like, how do you know Gavin? And I was like, oh, <laughs> I explained. And he literally was like, his emojis were like, his mind was blown. He was like, first of all, what, Kathy Rigby? And then two, he does theater. And I was like, not only does he do theater, he's a great dancer, he's a great singer, he's a great actor, and he can flip and crap. He's like a <laughs> gymnast. I mean, which is in your blood, but still. Um, so yeah, not, not man. <laughs> not things He's you get to show love him though. Yeah, not not things you get to showcase on a show like Sabrina, but all for all you fans out there who only know him from that, know that there are many more talents that lie uh within Gavin Leatherwood. So um we're of course gonna spend most of our time talking about Sabrina, but I wanna get to there get to there first. So um you of course have a love for theater. That's something that you have grown up with and um and do. I'm assuming that it's at some point you'll return and maybe even make a you know do something on broadway or at some point you know when things calm down i know obviously film and tv is where the money's at so you keep doing what you're doing but hopefully we get you back someday but you did move to new york um mm -hmm. I was to pursue a career in the arts and kind of give that a go um what was that like for you because you were there a, a kind of a short time before you came back to really dive into film and tv pretty yeah hard. i I didn't really know why I was going to New York. I was I was really kind of like at a at an all time low and lost and confused in Oregon, to be honest. And um, was just like playing a lot of music and was far from performing and was like just trying to figure out what I could do to completely shift my ways of thinking. And when I was in Oregon, I was like moving slowly, didn't know a lot of people, and the world was calm and connected to nature, and not a lot of people around, and I just needed a complete shift for myself, and I thought if I change my surroundings, maybe I'll change my mind, so I went to the complete opposite energy of Oregon, which was New York, yeah, where everyone's yeah. <laughs> right on top of each other, there's so many people, art is alive, and 
not to say that it's not alive in Oregon, just that it, it seems harder to find that kind of community when in New York you seem to bump into it at every moment. Yeah. Um, Oregon so is sort of a hipster kind of vibe. Yeah, or just just yeah. something like maybe a bit a bit more like limited or or um, you know like indie. There's like an indie scene more. I don't know. I I did some like extra work and stuff here, but um, I was just looking for a greater jolt of energy, and I felt like New York was gonna provide that. So I I just like on a real spontaneous whim was like I'm gonna go to New York and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, and I found myself like playing a lot of music. I think I was living out some sort of romantic, imaginative fantasy of being like a Bob Dylan, a young Bob, modern day Bob Dylan in New York and like, um, you know, but really um, I, I'm nothing like Bob Dylan. And uh, <laughs> and he, he was a legend and, you know, I was just sort of a lost, confused kid trying to find my way. Um, but yeah, while I was out there, a lot of weird things had kind of happened and roughed me up in several ways. Like, um, tell me about, you know, yeah, I, I remember hearing about your, uh, your journey on the subway. I had to be yep. a big, uh, I, I had to be a big, um, turning point for you of going like, mm, not for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are a few of those moments. Like I was on, I was on the subway and I f had fallen asleep, um, on the subway after like a long night of playing music in this cabaret club and uh, woke up at the last stop on the train. So I had missed my destination by like a few and it was like 3 a.m. and all my money had been stolen and phone had been stolen and they left the guitar, which I was very thankful for. So if you know that person ever sees us, thank you um, for not stealing my guitar. And um, you know, I had also like slept on a bench out in New York one night because um, I didn't know where to stay for a night. I. I was like um, uh, kind of in a precarious living situation and, uh, you know, just wasn't getting enough sleep, was drinking too much alcohol and was just very confused and not knowing what, um, what I was doing until I was hanging out with this group of artists and met this kid who had said that he booked a role on a TV show and uh, a light bulb had kind of switched on and I had realized that, that had I not gone there and felt this crazy surge of energy and been like, you know, just thrown into a whirlwind of life events, I wouldn't have met this kid who I can't remember his name now, but I wouldn't have met him and been reminded that I needed to honor this passion that I had, which was as an actor. Um, so I switched gears and just and just started making that like the new thing to chase. So when you when you did, because um, theater and film, of course, there's similarities, but there's a lot of differences between the two mm -hmm. art forms. And so as a young man, um, what did you do? Like when you came back to LA, I think you were actually living in Huntington, right? For a minute, like in my, like you were living like right I by I stayed me. with Daniel, yeah. <laughs> oh, I that's right, yeah, Daniel. literally walking distance from me. <laughs> yeah, I lived um, with him for like a month or something. It was excellent. Yeah, um, so what, um, what did you do to prepare yourself to diet? Like, did you have a, a class that you would, like for any actors out here specifically in LA, since mm -hmm. it's where you, you did this um, that you trained with or a coach or someone, or did you just kind of do your own research? How did you prepare to do film and TV? Um, you know, I had, I kind of relied on instincts for a long time until I realized that I didn't have enough tools to really shift gears. And by the way, you mentioned theater earlier. I just want to touch on that. Like there's nothing, there is nothing better for an actor than doing theater. Like I, I stand by this, whether it's musical theater or plays or whatever, like that is the greatest workout that any actor can get. It's the greatest adrenaline rush. It's, um, it's the scariest thing I think you can do is live theater as an actor. And it's the we're most beneficial gonna thing. Use, we're definitely gonna use that sound bite later. <laughs> Please do, man. I mean, that, it, yeah. it's, it's such a different beast, you know? And yeah, there's like the obvious things. Theater's a bit more physical and maybe a bit, a bit larger um, and, and, you know, could, yeah, like it, it, it has more of an animated feature about it while film is more of a constrained or subtle form of acting. And, um, you know, there, there were definitely things, I didn't just know that either, you know, like I, the, this was stuff that I had kind of studied over the years too. And yeah, there were classes in LA that I had taken um, which I can mention if, if that's kind of like, yeah. What, oh, please. Yeah. I think it'd be a great resource for people to check into it who are here in LA. Totally. Um, I had taken a class, uh, called the audition experience, the audition experience with Annie Grinley, 
Um, and I think that was on Beverly Boulevard. I can't remember now. Um, but that was an excellent approach, uh, like a, an excellent first step because auditioning is such a different beast than acting on, on screen. Um, auditioning is this weird, weird sort of dynamic of coming into a room full of strangers and it's an absolute blind date. Um, as soon as you walk in through the door and there's so many there are so many elements to auditioning in the room with someone that that class the audition experience with Annie Grinley was probably one of the best ways of of like um, just drilling it over and over and over uh, at the top of the day you'd get a pair of sides fresh sides a scene and you'd have 15 to 30 minutes to prepare that scene and then you would go into the room and perform it on camera and then watch it back with all the classmates, everyone's tape, and then go back and do it again for a second time. Uh, and we did this, I think like twice a week, three times a week, I forget, but it was such a great muscle to drill over and over and over again. Um, and it kind of got the uh, audition jitters, the, the initial audition jitters out of the way. However, uh, the next thing after like kind of working that muscle for a bit, which you can do in a class. You can also just go right out into the world and start auditioning. Being literally given, thrown into the fire is almost sometimes the, the best way to really try it out. Yeah, totally. And the, you know, the best piece of advice that I would have when it comes to that stuff is like the same thing that my mom said to me, which is like, you have to go fail 30 times. Um, you know, you, you, you have to just get all of the bad auditions out of the way. Like you're not going to audition your first 30 times. Sometimes, I mean, you hear stories like Florence Pugh auditioning her first audition. She like books Lady Macbeth and, and, and suddenly she's, you know, going on this roller coaster of a career and that happens. And I'm not saying it's impossible, but, um, the best thing I think to do is audition hundreds of times and just not get discouraged to train that muscle to not get discouraged after each audition. Um, um so, went off on a tangent there but yeah no not at all it's amazing um and i want to talk about something real quick that will transition us into sabrina but i have to just say we have the most international amazing group of people here from like macedonia scotland italy hong kong mexico croatia portugal i mean wow. from all over the world and of course uh, the the u.s um hope you hopefully you get in peru oh my gosh morocco wow oh my gosh. amazing so welcome uh, everyone this is uh so incredible to be connected in such an intimate way a hundred people from all over the world how amazing I love it. wow um, amazing. okay so um we are going to um yeah keep going here now real quickly what was your um how long from starting to train when you really started to go, okay, I need to, I need to strengthen my skills to really start to book. Um, mm -hmm. What, how long was it from that moment till you booked your first, was NCIS your first thing? Um, I mean, like, first case, so. like network thing. Um, yeah, I think so. I think it was that, I mean, you know, when I first started like getting after this was probably like 2014 or so um yeah actually like right around there 2015 i had i had been slowly like commuting from orange county and driving to la uh, if i'm not mistaken Brutal. i think those are the dates but um yeah i just i had just been excuse me auditioning as much as i had uh, as much as i possibly could i booked like um uh, a non-union commercial called Course Hero where I was like the main guy in it and that was like the first thing I think that was in LA I had done one thing previous which was in Atlanta Georgia and it was a short 15 minute film called Washington and Vine um, and we shot it over the course of three days and that was uh, connect like brought to me through a friend Kelly Heyer I don't know if you know Kelly Heyer mm -hmm. Um, and she she was like my friends are doing this film in Georgia and they need a guy and I I like kind of asserted myself there, but didn't really know anything at that point either. That was the first camera stuff. Started getting out in LA and submitting myself on Actors Access diligently as often as possible. Went to Course Hero and did that commercial and like booked that for myself. And I think like a couple of other small commercial spots. And then um, NCIS had come up after like, I don't know, the 
hundredth audition or something. I don't know how many there were. Just, I, the main reason for asking the question is just for people that are looking to do it. It. I mean, I had a friend who went out and she, on her first audition, booked a national commercial, and mm -hmm. that's unusual. But to, mm -hmm. to say that like persistence is key and training is key, and that you know you do have to get the hundred no's before you book the first big thing, you know, mm -hmm. what I mean? yeah. or, or more. So it's uh you know, yeah really really cool um to um to hear that part of your story sorry we had a an unmuted uh <laughs> yes um so anyway um now for Voices. what everyone's been waiting for sabrina so um you uh two questions that relate to the audition aspect of this how long was that process like from the moment you started to the moment you were cast and then had they begun because you didn't come in until episode four or some ish like that um yep. did you um were you cast before filming began like you knew or was that because sometimes on shows they they're casting so quickly up against you know something mm -hmm. being filmed so yeah no they they were already filming um when i auditioned i i had actually initially auditioned for harvey kinkle um, but was like, I think I had a different energy about me, so I didn't, uh, but I knew that the project, like I knew that it was kind of happening right around then. And then, um, and then they were filming and then this new character had kind of come up. They move really fast. Like they write scripts and they write new characters and then, you know, they, they put out a casting notice and, and hope to get someone in time and it's worked thus far for them. Um, but yeah, they had put out that notice, um, while they were already filming, I think they were filming like the second or third episode, uh, and the fourth episode had been written, and they were they were looking for that character. I think I didn't know initially like what their plan was. I heard that he would just kind of pop in and out and be sort of a expositional character. Um, and my manager and I plotted and schemed and had different ideas, and we were like, <laughs> "No, let's make him the most you know." badass dude that we possibly can like let's go in there and then you know kill it um but yeah they they had cast me and i i essentially flew out like a week after being cast so i had the initial audition which was on like a tuesday and then a callback on a wednesday um and i had been in for david rapaport before so we kind of had a, a small rapport like you know, nothing, nothing too personal, but like he had seen me a couple times, I think, um, which is why it's like persistence beats resistance. It's like, even though the first time it might not be a love connection, it's because they're thinking of someone else while they're seeing you. But when the character that they have in mind and you meet the same sort of criteria and you as an actor have to do everything you can to sort of know that character in and out so that you can offer all of that to it or be yeah. open enough, I should rather say uh to receiving that character and embodying that character um so that's that's you know part of the job but yeah david had seen me a couple times and then um and then uh i didn't hear back until like the next week and i was in my car right after a non-union walmart commercial uh that i totally bombed and didn't get and um and got a phone call from my manager and agent and knew that it was a big deal because they were both calling me and, um, and you know, they had told me that like a week later I was going to fly out. So it, it happened pretty fast. They're like, is your passport current? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What has it been like working? Is there any, been any large, and you guys film in Canada, correct? In like Toronto? Yeah. Vancouver. Yeah. Vancouver. Um, so what, what it has been like working for, netflix like a streaming service versus like a major network has there been any difference um in working for something like that i don't really know how much to compare it to like i was on ncis's set twice you know once right. for a fitting and for makeup and stuff and then like and then, i had worked oh, on this yeah. show called my dad x which was a youtube show with brian Malati um and uh leah lewis who's now on a netflix home which is great to see shout out to leah uh yeah and um you know was on that so that was like youtube i believe like youtube red or their streaming channel um and then i had done like an episode of grownish in which my scene got cut 
um, and then did an episode in um, Animal Kingdom in which my scene got cut. So they were like, <laughs> I had seen a little taste of these things and like you would have never known that I was even there. Um, and it's funny to like kind of be branded with those shows and like you can't find me even if you look for me. Right. Um, <laughs> but I was gathering intel and just, you know, I, I think I was more focused on like the operation of it all as opposed to like what what the treatment or anything like that was like. I was just kind of paying attention to what a set was like because I, I was recognizing I was still so early on, you know? I mean, I, 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 I'm still constantly learning something new on set every single day. And being on these different sets, you just see how different sets operate. And getting to Sabrina, this is a big long circle to get back to <laughs> the original question. Um, the biggest difference I noticed was the level of camaraderie and familial vibe and love that was on set. Like there was just an overwhelming sense of that stuff there. And you can see that, which again, actually is something that we'll talk about in a second, but um, mm -hmm. I, uh, there's literally the, the chat is like overwhelming because it's like, it won't stop. Um, so it's even hard, like, hard to keep up with uh, all the questions being asked. So obviously we have, I have my own, but uh, the one question that I keep seeing being asked, which I am, absolutely going to ask you is what is your favorite part about filming Sabrina like mm. favorite part at favorite aspect about filming the show um man that's such a hard thing to like narrow down because there's there's days where your your favorite thing is like can be the most taxing thing and there's days where like the thing that's most taxing um becomes your most favorite thing you know so I guess the answer is that every day is different yeah you know it, it no two days are ever the same like there's some days where you're standing in the background of a scene for the you know for a, sometimes like a 14 to 15 hour shoot day and you're not saying anything and you're with a lot of people and sometimes those days are like you know the energy can be like damn like let's you know let's get like, let's go home. Like this is, this is long. And, and then there's some days where we have that same sort of circumstance and we're all like dancing and laughing and making music and, and just like so punchy and can't, can't control ourselves, contain ourselves. And this, you know, childlike essence is pouring out of us and we're just filled up with joy, you know, and then there's days where there's like big, long, lengthy scenes. And if you don't have your lines down, then you're, you're like, pissed about it and frustrated at the fact that you can't remember your lines and then there's days where you have a big lengthy scene and you have them committed to memory and you're able to like what you think kill it you know right right yeah so uh, every no. every day is just different and as a um, reward is there like a moment though that of all the stuff you've filmed thus far that you're like that was so much fun or that was so hard but so rewarding like is there like one moment you were like that's my favorite moment that i've done so far it sounds a little sadistic tj but it's this really like um it's this really intense scene between kiernan and i in the woods um in part three the hair moon episode where it's like this big it's this big sort of confrontational blow-up scene between my character and kiernan's character and um i i had it was sort of it was one of the first times where i felt like uh i inched close to to truth as an actor, which sounds like, sounds sort of like, I don't know, like chauvinistic or something. I don't know what the word is, but, um, but like there's moments as an actor where you just feel like the incessant thinking of a human stops and you're somewhat out of your own body in a weird spiritual kind of way where you're not, you're so in touch with the moment and the character and it feels like the most, feels like the greatest high you can experience as a human being that's natural um, in a form of artistic creation or expression and, and getting close to radiating an emotion through what felt to be like a genuine moment was one of the most rewarding things. And I remember sleeping like a baby after that day. Um, yeah. And it's a devastating yeah. scene and the fandom I hundred percent I think yeah. that, like there's nothing more rewarding than an a for an actor to honestly feel like you're genuinely experiencing something uh, and it's not often I wish that that could be expanded on more and it, that's yeah. the whole goal I think as an actor is to learn 
to arm yourself with the tools to get closer to that constantly. Yes, um, 100%. Um, so the um, visual, like there's so many visual effects and specialty makeup and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, for you, like, is there, have you dealt with, it's kind of a two part question. Like, um, you, I remember, I think there was an episode maybe where you had, or someone had changed color or something like that. Or, I mean, like when you're having to deal with things like that, whether it's you or someone else, when you're having to put, make something there that isn't there, that's maybe being put mm -hmm. in in post. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Um, about that process and like how you guys all have to deal with that aspect. You know, it's, it's weird. How like, much is maybe a deal on set and how much isn't? Sure. Because Bronson, yeah, I mean, Bronson would text me video of him in like the dailies or whatever with him acting like he was covered with spiders, but like nothing was on him. And he was yeah. just, <laughs> this is wild. Anyway. I mean, that's part of the job, right? Like, you know, yeah, you, you've got to, you've got to utilize the imagination and sometimes it's harder than others. Um, for example, there's an episode where um, this lovely man named Quentin, he, he was playing our Dark Lord for a very long time. He's like six foot seven, I think. So he's a very, very tall dude. And he also played um, Amalia, which was like, it was the werewolf who was my familiar, who was, who raised me and like was my mother. So, you know, there was a scene that we had shot where he's in the wolf's wolf suit, which was practical, of, except of course, like when you get a close up and see the snarling and stuff, that's all special, special effects. But uh, from afar, it's mostly him and his body. Um, and, you know, they'll make it blink and all that. But, uh, you know, there, there's like an emotional scene where, you know, Amali is dead, like Sabrina stabs her in order to protect me, which, you know, we still don't know if that was an okay move or not, Sabrina. Uh, but you know, <laughs> the wolf is like dead, and Quentin is in the suit. And I'm like, I'm holding him, and and you know, it's it's intended to be this really emotional scene of you know holding holding um, your mother the, essentially. Yeah, your mother, the creature that raised you, and um, and there was a take where he like almost passed out because the suit was like quite constricting, and we didn't want to see face or anything, and it covered his mouth and I felt him like hyperventilating. So she's like supposed to be dead, but he's breathing really big. And we're worried about him and like, dude, are you okay in there? Like we had to stop like mid take and, you know, so it's, it can definitely pose a, a challenge now and then. Uh, and how, how difficult, I mean, to go into some intimate, really emotional moment and have to keep going in and out of it. That would be, um, because unlike theater, it's like you're in it or you're not, but it goes. Totally. You know I mean? But film, yep. I think that would be the most challenging thing about film is just retaking, 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 yep. and how draining that would be. Yeah, and that day certainly was. And I feel like that, you know, um, uh, I feel like that day sort of got, got the best of me. It was the first time of, of really coming up against an obstacle like that and it being more of an emotional beat. Um, I, I felt like that was one of the first curveballs I had experienced on the show, having this big emotional scene with a lot of dialogue and then having these outside circumstances and being covered in blood and shirtless and it's freezing outside and it's 2 a.m. and the crew is tired and wants to go home as well. Right. So all of those things were an amazing challenge and, uh, and sort of a... Is what everyone the feel like you? They're like, okay, man. <laughs> That's what it feels like. You hold a yeah. lot of responsibility, and it's easy to take uh, stuff personal. But you know, I, um, I I feel like in the long run, you can look back retrospectively and be like, well, that was a learning lesson, and I was able to grow from that. But at the time, it, I I totally felt like I didn't crush that scene. Uh, I felt like it definitely got the better of me, and I could have been more prepared and all that stuff. We all, we all need those moments, you know, it makes you better. It makes you better the next time. So definitely valuable. Really. Um, so the world of Sabrina that, that they have, they have created feels, um, this is a good question. My, my sister actually, um, brought up in that it feels really current and dated all at the same time. And let me clarify by what that means. You have a character dealing with like gender identity, but then you also have like, witches will obey warlocks like you know women will obey men you know what i mean so i'm 
what how how much of that like since you came on like not from the very beginning but almost but how much are you are you aware was that intentional um to have it feel very kind of like these two different worlds like you know pulling pulling at each other or or what what do you know about any of that yeah i i really i mean at the beginning i didn't know diddly about it i i was just like i just wanted <laughs> for the ride yeah i was like i just want to act i just want the opportunity to play a character you know so i i honestly wasn't thinking anything about like uh the the social justice aspect of it or or the um you know the societal change of it all i i i hadn't really thought a lot about it also because my character is a completely dealing with completely different things where it's more of a romantic lead and that was more of what i was paying my energy to and my mindset on like was was layers of that um not to say that it isn't um it isn't it isn't great for <laughs> someone else popped up on here. Oh, really? Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> I don't know who it was, but I just saw a different face. I'm like, that's got not TJ. <laughs> <laughs> Gigi's got it. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Gigi. Um, hi, everyone, by the way. Sorry, we yeah. got all jabbed. Um, yeah, so, you know, it, it wasn't like, it wasn't, um, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't on the forefront of my mind really during it. Um, and you know I, I was more so focused on what nick was doing as yeah. a character and um and just doing whatever i could to bring his truth to life the best way i could and then it wasn't really until doing like a first round of press where i realized how big of a of an impact the show was making in that regard and how that's where a lot of its commentary was um you're on a really i mean we'll talk about even more controversial things in a minute but i mean you're on a really controversial show and if you look at like the the age bracket of the people that are in here it's all very young you know so mm -hmm. me people <laughs> totally. and um so it's interesting you know it's uh, yeah we'll, we'll and we'll get into more of that too but yeah it's a it's cool that there are so many different um it's a very well layered show. There's a, it's a very complicated and well layered show. And so it's, um, and it, it deals with a lot of controversial things. So it's, uh, it, it must feel uh, when you go out on a press junket or something that mu you must feel a lot of pressure. I would imagine like, w especially with certain, especially if it's like a conservative network of like, you know, how dare you, or what about this or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. you, you have to, I'm sure be very prepared for those types of things. Um, but I want to talk about your social media just for a second, because um, having watched you pre and then now post, your social media has kind of shifted, which I'm one, I, I don't know if that's like just you growing up or because I don't know if there's something about like once you're on a show like that, if they have like, you can post, you can't post this, that type of thing. And I'd love to touch on that because you used to do fun things with like your camera being in random places with then like your cup of coffee. And, yeah. Uh, what are you know fun things like that and that's all kind of uh gone away and uh mm -hmm. so what is that just a natural pr uh, um progression of you evolving as a human or th is there anything that you're allowed or not allowed to do on social media yeah there's nothing there's nothing really that they've said you can or can't do this i mean obviously like spoilers and yeah. you know i mean even in the beginning they didn't really want me sharing pictures with anyone because they didn't want they don't want people to know that I was in the cast and stuff, but they didn't really say like, Hey, you should set up your phone like this and, and, you know, do a hands-free video and walk into the background shirtless and grab an apple. You know, there was, <laughs> there was none of that. That was just me being an attention hungry little bugger when I saw 11,000 followers and I was like, how do I entertain 11,000 people? There's people watching. What should I do with that? And so I, you know, I was inspired by YouTubers I watched and whatnot, and it, it was totally like an ego fulfilling act. Like, and now uh, you've I, grown up, and now you're like, yeah, not so much anymore. <laughs> well, I had fallen in love with the attention, and then it, it made me nervous because I didn't. I knew that that was sort of that was sort of going to be the beginning of the end. Was as soon as I started realize, like, as soon as I started thinking, wow, like all of these people um, who are fans of the show and stuff or are coming through here and seeing this, um, you know, I, I, 
I, I don't know. I just felt myself getting further away from me and doing things in a way that was like feeding off of a part of myself that I liked, but felt was a little bit more toxic. I have to um, tell you, like, I am so, it makes, it's like such a proud, like dad moment just to be like, <laughs> dude like what an incredible life lesson for you to like know that about yourself and then about how you uh yeah i was saying like gretchen just said like so level-headed like it's something that you are uh Thanks, yeah like teaching teaching yourself and then in turn now teaching others that you know mm -hmm. it needs to be about because what 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 if that all goes away at some point you know what i mean totally um, and yeah. that's not why i'm in the biz tj yeah. like that's never ever been my Right. It's never been my focus. Right. I don't, I, I'm, you know, not that I, not to say, I know a lot of like fans from the show are watching right now too. And not to say that I don't, I don't love the fact that we're being supported and adored and loved in some, in some regard. Um, oh but yeah. I, we're, yeah. We're actors. We all have ego, right? That's of course. Of, like there, yeah. there's going to be a, there's going to be an, uh, you know, there's going to be a percentage of that in everyone. Um, however, when, like I never got into this biz for the fame. I never got into this business for money and I didn't get into it for admiration or respect. You know, at, at the clearest I had ever been, I had gotten into this business to be an artist, to be a creator, to inspire change, to maybe play a certain role that would allow people to f allow themselves to empathically feel themselves, experience it in some way in order for their hearts and minds to open in some way so that I could be an agent of change in other people's lives so that they could feel something and maybe deepen their well of empathy or compassion or understanding in some regard. So as soon as I felt my morals and my foundation slipping away from me and going into a direction of look at how I'm receiving this sort of feedback and attention based off of these silly, um, you know, sort of videos that I've been taking, as soon as I felt myself liking that, I knew that it was going to um, it was, it was becoming detrimental to my psyche. So that's when I wanted to turn it around and do things like thoughts of the day, which, you know, was, okay, well, I have all these people watching now. Now, what can I say in order to inspire change in them? How can I, how can I, I inspire others to love themselves more? So how can I inspire people to chase their dreams and realize that the world isn't a prison and that they can live any sort of way that, you know, they, they see fit or they yeah. that they you know whatever and so that's kind of how that came apart uh, you know and and then it became it, it started feeling like a really big responsibility and i would get very emotional notes from people and um just stuff that i did not feel equipped for things that i did not feel qualified to take on um it's amazing it, what celebrity does, like because they it, it's people like I, i'm even looking in the chat on here asking you know how do you deal with, you know, someone who's dealing with anxiety and asking like, do you have anxiety and how do you deal with it? But like people really do look to celebrities for a lot of answers to stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to hear you just say like, I don't feel equipped. I'm not a therapist. Like right. I don't feel equipped to give you that advice. <laughs> it's funny that yeah. celebrities are turned to in that regard as if we have everything figured out. You know, I mean, if yeah. anything, we, we, we've just gotten really good at hiding it, you know? Yeah. And, and I, I don't know if there's a lot of people that, I mean, I'm sure there are. I actually, I know that there's um, celebrities that are, you know, being advocates for change. And, and you know, I, I would definitely love to go in that direction at some point, but I'm, I'm still learning myself. Right. You know, and I'm still learning on how to deal with my own, my own shit. You know, I'm part of my yeah, French, but right. no, that's yeah. just the truth. Amen. So you and your cast seem to be uh, really close. Like it all, like you, and you said earlier that it's like a big, family and I, you know you post a lot with the actor who plays your competition on the show harvey um mm -hmm. and as, uh, luke cook who plays uh lucifer on the show um they seem to be close buddies of yours is there anybody on set that's a like a prankster and is there like a prank that has ever been pulled on set that you're like man that was good that was a good there's there's loads of mischief like i i think that we all love a little bit of a little bit of trouble like good trouble you know we're not gonna like um, do anything to like ruin anyone's day but uh, you know there is definitely a level of of mischief amongst us um, something that I don't think I've I've said like in, in 
a, a, a public sphere of some sort. It's so funny to say public. I feel like I can just talk about anything because I'm looking out at the woods and nature and I'm talking to you. And, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, we're, we're going to share the private moment with public anyways. There was a night where, um, where we were having these really long turnaround days. Like, like we would shoot like 15 hours and then we'd have to be, and then we'd have to like drive home an hour and a half from this crazy location we were shooting on. And then in the morning, drive back an hour and a half as well. So that's three hours of driving and, and we'd get like five hours of sleep and then do it all over again the next day. And one night, um, Ross and I were like, man, screw this. Like, <laughs> screw driving all the way home to sleep for like four hours and then drive all the way back and do it all over again tomorrow. Um, so we asked Kiernan, who has like a, a relatively large, nice trailer, if we could sleep in it, which is totally against like union laws and, and, <laughs> and we would have totally gotten in trouble. But um, Ross and I like stayed the night there and, and slept in Kiernan's trailer and like uh, stayed warm in this like in, the, in a cold, cold winter <laughs> night in Vancouver in this trailer with no power. And, uh, um, you know, like walked around all the trailers at night and kind of like snuck around and, and there was a train track near it and we like went and watched trains go by. And it was just a really freaking lovely night. And, like just a little touch of mischief and rebelliousness. Um, but we've all got a touch of that. Like You gotta have that. That's what keeps things interesting. You have to. That's right. Um, so speaking of, um, speaking of Lucifer, (laughs) something I never thought I'd say, um, but now we get into a couple controversial things before we start to, start to wrap up because you've been so generous with your time, but, um, you know, the show is obviously based on a comic book series and then a fluffy, very fluffy version of, of it on TV, um, years ago. Um, but this is a true horror supernatural show. Uh, and so not even like necessarily speaking on your own, uh, beliefs, uh, unless you want to, but, um, are there people like in the cast that are, and when I say, I I said this to you earlier, like when I say religious, but I'm I'm saying for the room, when I say religious, I don't mean like you are a nun or a priest kind of religious. Like I'm talking about like you go to church or you go to temple or you go to synagogue or whatever whatever your religion may be, um, and maybe you even only go on the holidays, but you have some kind of faith. Um, Mm -hmm. What is it like for people on set, like dealing with, uh, because I know watching it, like myself, I'm I'm a Christian. I'm not like, um, you know, crazy or anything, but I'm Mm -hmm. a Christian. I have faith. And so I know watching it for myself, I was like, I started to be like, I do I feel bad about watching this right now? (laughs) I was like, this is like, I kept thinking like, oh, Sabrina's gonna like, she's gonna be the kicking ass of the devil kind of girl, and that's what right. she's gonna be like. And I would, I was like totally like ready for that on board. And then I was like, oh, nope, no, that's not. She's what She's like becoming is. the devil. Yeah. Yeah. She's okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> so what is that? What is that like? Because I mean, as actors, we are all called upon to take on projects, whether that be you're gonna be naked in something, you're gonna have to say a word you don't want to say, you're gonna have to you know, uh, whether you're a person of color, you have to be in a period piece and you're playing like, you know, uh, a, a slave or something, or you're, a, you know, not a person of color, and you're doing a period piece and you have to do horrible things the other way. There's a yeah. ton of things. This happens to be a very religious and political kind of divisive show. So mm-hmm. on that aspect specifically, what what is that like? Um, yeah, I mean, kind of like you said, dude, as actors, we're, we're meant to take on these things that are, you know, um, that can be strange to some degree. I think all of us, I don't know, like, everyone's particular beliefs. I know, funny enough, like, Luke Cook, um, he, his dad's a pastor, and, and he's very <laughs> Christian. Like, like, the man himself that plays Lucifer, he stayed with me a couple nights in my apartment, and I woke up to him staring out my window, sitting in a chair, reading a Bible. And I had no idea, you know, and, and he's quite devout in his faith and proud of it. And we've had discussions about Christianity and, um, you know, I think we're all really inclined to have some form of faith and, and some forth, some, some, um, some like spiritual guidance or foundation 
that's rooted in faith. And I think, you know, for the most part, um, if you get me talking about my own, I won't shut up. So I'm not even going to go there. Like, no, I, I yeah. And I, and I, and I don't want to get that personal anyway, but like yeah. even talking about like, um, him, like, have you guys ever talked, and someone even said, like, is there even, like, a quote that you, and with him, it might be scripture, because that's his, his thing, but, um, because it's one of those things that you watch the show, or if you watch the show, um, I always like to go, and maybe the show doesn't really, uh, hasn't revealed that yet, and maybe it never will, maybe it's not that, maybe that's not what it is, you know what I mean, which is, again, its own thing, but, you know, when you, when you do these, like, for example, an example I used earlier about, like, a period piece, you know, when you're mm -hmm. playing either end of that relationship, you are shedding light on something that, you know, uh, and I'm not saying this about Sabrina, I'm just saying this about, you know, that situation, on something that's horrific and wrong, and you want to go, or if you're making a movie about the Holocaust, you're like, because we should never repeat this again, we need to educate people and bring those kinds of things out into light you know what I mean so with Sabrina it seems like it's I, I we haven't gotten there yet to find out is like is there a so I mean like the actor playing Lucifer how did his parents deal with that <laughs> and then I don't like, know how does, I think, and then, yeah how does he like I mean is it one of those things where you, he knows like okay I know where we're headed and I know that you know I'm gonna say my prayer and whatever but that's interesting it's just such an interesting fascinating part of our business you know and and in creating art so you gotta ask the tough questions so what do you yeah think? totally <laughs> yeah man i have no idea how how he's dealt with it like i i you know i don't know what it, i'm sure his parents were like well you know what's that about um but you know i mean he's he's 33 um funny enough uh oh. <laughs> and, which is great and um you know he he's not bothered by it like i you know while while we're while it's our job to be sensitive and emotional and understanding of like material being put out, there's such a fine line between balancing what what you're doing as a character and for a show and and kind of a you know trusting trusting the material, trusting the writers, um, and then you know allowing yourself to wear the hat and play the part, and then not taking any of that into your personal life of course yeah you know i, I mean that's if, where if I, I think as actors or directors or writers or whomever we understand how to separate i think that you know like you have to know how to like leave it on stage just like you leave your personal stuff at the door but i think i i um with and again not even just sabrina with many things especially as a dad of young <clears throat> you know three young kids mm -hmm. uh, you go like what you want to hope and hope and pray that parents are raising people to understand this is entertainment and mm -hmm. this or whatever. But then, you know, people who idolize celebrities or, or, or literally like, you know, celebrities talk about all the time being on the street and they'll be like, if they play a villain, they'll get like accosted, like, how dare you do that? Yeah. Well, you're like I was paid to learn those lines and act that out lady. Like, don't, that's not me. But like totally. some people, some people um, unfortunately like, their lines are too blurred and they they mm -hmm. forget reality mm -hmm. versus not so um yeah that would feel like a lot of responsibility in doing a show like this just kind of putting content out there that's like that it is and you know what teach the, like the thing is too and, and i'm gonna speak like beyond sabrina even um there are pieces of film and and um you know actors and directors and writers that need to step up to the plate sometimes in order to tell those hard stories Mm -hmm. um because without certain films and without i mean if you know like schindler's list for example you know what a dark brutal film and you think like is that fun to make probably not like but is that a tough scary. role to play is that a yeah. is that a lot to take on absolutely but is it more important than your own personal feelings yes 100 percent. and it's a story that should be told and people should learn from um and you know that's why i'm saying like beyond sabrina because i feel like what sabrina is is like a fun ride in this like supernatural world that is taking on um you know topics like the devil and 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 hell and all of this but i don't really think that people are getting so swept up in in that side of things and and maybe they are but you know i, I think it's supposed to be enjoyed as like 
more of a lighthearted, campy, fun um, sort of world, uh, which it is, you know, it's, it's kind of like a YA drama, which it has its place in the world. And, um, and it's fun and enjoyable by a lot of people. But um, sure. do I think that it's like a staple for, uh, um, you know, like you should, you should, you yourself should become the herald of hell and pray Satan. No, I, you know, if that works for you and you're not harming anyone, then please go forth. I mean, there's people on our show and the crew that are practicing witches. We have writers in our crew that are practicing witches. Right. Uh, Which are very, and it's very different, like, uh, just to like go into that, like the, the, people who are witches or in Wicca or Wiccan or whatever, that, mm -hmm. that's very, very different than what is this, you know, uh, portrayed in your show mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. as far as like that. And then say, likewise, um, which we'll, we'll talk about maybe next that I don't know the, the satanic religion or, or whatever sued your show for the, uh, you know, because of your, uh, the use of their, statue or, or what yep. have you. And it's funny, I watched a documentary um, on that because religion is always fascinating to me. Um, yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, it's funny that they don't actually, and I'm sure there are people that are, satan you know, satanic that actually are more in line with uh, your show, actually, that are out there. But I'm talking about, like, this documentary was like, we don't even really believe that this is a real person. Like, it's like, or a real thing. Like, they're they're the totally a totally different vibe which was interesting to to look they're more just like anti-religion you know what i mean and, and using that as their symbol for for that so did that ever get resolved that that do you know anything about that i know i know nothing about it i i do know that um uh um yeah, I don't really know. And, and then we like smashed the statue to bits and in a couple episodes and stopped using that image because it's like, whatever, man. You yeah, I know. don't want us to use Baphomet. Whatever, we loved him, but he'll live on in rubble and, you know, we'll wreck yeah. the new statue then. <laughs> oh, I love it. So last controversial thing I want to ask you about is the infamous orgy scene, which caused a uh, very... Um, a lot of news, a lot of news, both in the conservative, not so conservative worlds, because it was obviously you all are not minors, but it was portraying minors in a very sexy way. So sure. um, what <laughs> what was that a, like having to film a scene like that? Um, mm -hmm. I, I've only ever heard that they're awkward. I don't know if uh, how that was for you, but what was that like? And then um, dealing with then the did you have to deal with or is that just production that has to deal with the out the backlash if you will from that scene right i i'm just glad tj that i had years of practice going into that scene. <laughs> 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 because i wouldn't have known what the hell to do um no yeah of course there's like a layer of like you know it's so technical man the crew and like they're so great at you know, figuring out how to make it look <laughs> sexy and stuff, and um, we got a gig. Uh, <laughs> right. um, and, you know, they they like. You know, they're, it was just a, a way of shooting it technically to make it look really cool. Like, I'm like I had Tati's foot in my mouth for half of that. Like, I wasn't getting touched or anything, and I'm like playing with a foot. Like, what the hell? Um, no one's like, no one really baby, no one's making a baby that way. Like, yeah. What's that? <laughs> so no one's making a baby that way. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, no, you know, it was totally innocent. And like, I actually remember <laughs> feeling a little like left out of the loop for that. Cause like <laughs> Chance is like making out with Darren um, and with Adeline, I think, and with Tati and Abby's like on top of Adeline and like, there's a hand on Abby's butt and stuff. And then I'm left at the freaking very bottom with a foot. On a foot. <laughs> because I had a line, so I had to turn around. And I was like, man, why didn't I get the, like the, you know, why, why, why? Why am whatever. I not making out? I have to make out without totally. foot. <laughs> but it looked, it looked sexy. That's what, you know, that was the whole, that was the whole shtick. And I think, I think we accomplished it. But you know what, like, we, yeah, we're all young. We were all young and like, it was kind of early on in the process. We were all very much in love with each other. You know, there was so much of that, like, 
of that initial spark between all of us. So there was so much, um, there, was, there was just so much ease with it. Like it wasn't, it wasn't weird. We were like, how fun, how fun that we all get to like, Be. you know, throw a sexy side of ourselves and enjoy yeah. it. And, and it's not gratuitous in a way that's like, you know, showing butts and boobs and stuff. And, and it's, it, it right. didn't feel wrong or uncomfortable or like we were being asked too much of. Um, and awesome. they have a post set. It was great. It was, it, awesome. it felt really fun. I'm and Chance glad. and I would not stop doing push ups and pull ups right before. Uh, I'm... <laughs> we we're like, we gotta beef up, man. We gotta look. Yes, up. yes. <laughs> Make sure those abs are on fire. That's um, right. We'll so, when, right is, when is ne the next season coming? Have you guys already shot that and it's not released yet? Or did you, were you in Correct. the process of shooting? Not yeah, shot? Yeah, we shot, we shot part four. Um, okay absolutely no idea when it's coming out it's it's okay. been shot they don't tell us anything man okay um they keep us totally in the dark yeah part three came out we shot part four we have no news about part five or part six and we don't know when part four will be dropping and i wish i knew have, more you have a guarantee up to six is that what it is no we actually like we don't know about five or six yet i think this whole this whole world circumstance kind of through curveballs at every production everywhere oh, obviously yeah um it's gonna so, be a minute. yeah like this time last year we were already like on to the third episode of part three you know so we're we're quite behind at this point i think we were out there in like march last year um so yeah you know we're we're two months past that and there's no no news so we don't know okay um and then last well, not my last, but last question for now until we then we'll move into taking um, a couple from our amazing, very international audience. Um, and Gigi, your job's gonna suck because you have to pick them from all these people. I don't know how you're gonna do it, but it's gonna be at random. Um, so Gavin, is there a dream role uh, or project or director besides myself uh mm -hmm. <laughs> or uh and uh, that you would love to tackle on film screen and or um a dream role in a show like a, a broadway show that you'd love to do yeah i mean i i definitely want to get back on stage i'm reading a lot of plays right now to kind of just start planting those seeds and and wondering what that might look like in the future um i really do want to get on stage tj it's such an itch man we gotta um, get you back oh man know, it was so dude. much fun we gotta do it I'm, I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading so many, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm loving, I'm loving that. Um, uh, I love A24 films. I feel like A24 films, um, I, I'm just a big fan of their production company. They put out so many raw, genuine, authentic feeling films that get to the truth of stuff and um, don't really paint like heroes or villains. They paint people. And I think that that's like a beautiful thing that film should continue to do um so you know like i i've said it before i'd say it again like you know any any project that a24 does um and then like you know aside from something so um grounded or so, like i don't know there's there's an urge to just play something that's so different from nick scratch something along the lines of like what dustin hoffman did in tootsie or like what oh, philip yeah. seymour hoffman did in flawless like there's such an urge to play someone that's not cool guy, bad boy, sexy, you know, whatever sort of suave yep. dude. I want to play something, you know, on the opposite end of that spectrum. Yeah. She's coming in for the last tail bits. She is. I know. <laughs> Come now on. That now that we're at age appropriate things. Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, depending on time, we've had so many people who are wanting to ask questions. We may, depending on how long the answers are and or how long the questions are, we may take a couple others before I do my two minute rapid fire questions. Um, so let's, uh, let's take- Behave. One, Everyone behave, behave people. Behave. Please. Behave. Okay, let's see. Alyssa, I see you. You're on muted. Go ahead and ask your question, Alyssa. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Hi, Gavin. It's so yes. amazing to... Oh my gosh, that's a student of mine. Hi! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not blonde. I have black hair. Yeah, Alyssa, many names. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. 
<laughs> um, so my question for you is, what advice do you have for actors in this crazy time? I mean, work is so hard to find. Um, should we be actively trying to find work or maybe we should just be working on our craft and really practicing um, and for until the country opens again? Totally. Thanks for your question, Alyssa. Um, I think that's a great, a great thing to, yeah, I, you know, it's such a weird time. I think we do have to accept that, that the world sort of needs a moment to breathe and figure out you know, what the best way to move forward is. It's a weird, it's a weird thing in terms of that. I don't think our focus should be to actively find work right now. So many productions are in the dark and figuring out like, how do we, how do we open a set again? And, you know, I've heard like little, little murmurs up in Vancouver from people on productions like The Good Doctor, where they're going through a really rigorous process in order to open production back up. And it requires a lot of testing, a, a crew and cast quarantining together for multiple weeks to ensure that no one is going to bring in any of that. So that's, that's an aspect of it. And, you know, and, and they're kind of at the forefront of that. I think there's a couple of productions in Australia as well, but you know, there, I, I don't, I don't think that that should ever really be the focus. Like an actor's job is to audition, of course, and and um, and to to do that. But it's not necessarily like um, you should be proactively looking for a job. I think I think you should constantly be planting seeds. And the the best way to ensure that the seeds that you're planting are going to grow are to make sure that those seeds that you have are being taken care of and nurtured for. And that is the craft. So right now is such, such an excellent time, Alyssa, to be reading plays, watching films, getting in touch with yourself and figuring out what you're, what you're scared of, just, you know, deepening the, the knowledge of the self, right? Like that's, that's such a critical thing that you have the opportunity to do right now. You don't need to be anywhere and worry about getting to places and, and all, all of that, you know, it's like you're able to sit at home with yourself so I think it's a really beautiful time to sort of to sort of look inward, look at um, you know other actors that you admire, watch everything that they've done, watch interviews that they've done, um, you know, read plays and read books and um, um, and you know all of that too, like to continue working on the craft then because that's research, right? Then you have to get proactive about it. So learn a monologue. Um, grab your mom or your dad or whoever's around and make them do a scene with you, you know, be like, I will do the dishes for a week if you do a scene with me, right? Whatever you have, whatever you can do, you do whatever you can, like whatever it takes in order to act because we are actors, we are creators, and this is what we are here to do. So find a way to do that, even if it's with your mom in the kitchen. Yes. Okay, I think uh -oh. we could take two more real quick um john mark i see you you're unmuted go ahead john mark yep hi gavin first of all i just want to say i love you love you back hi john um yeah um i just want to ask like what's um was was there a what's the, what's the most um unforgettable audition that you had as an actor Ooh, Ooh good question um wow What's the most unforgettable audition I've had? Is there a really bad one? <laughs> yeah, they typically are. Like the really bad ones usually are the 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 ones that are unforgettable. Um, and it was it was a it was the second callback for a Criminal Minds episode, um, where it was like a recurring guest star, and uh, I remember it being sort of a big deal to me at the time, and um, I had made a really great mistake and learned from it. Uh, the night before the second callback, I had an old friend reach out who was shipping out the next day and was leaving for a year. So I wasn't going to be able to see him for a year and he wanted to hang out and we hung out and then he, you know, he was like, you want to have a glass of wine? I was like, sure. And then we drank a bottle of wine and then, and then we were up late. And, and then I went to the audition the next day, just not prepared, not ready. And, and, um, and, I remember being so embarrassed at that callback. I, I was just such in a fog and it was, the, it was the most important audition I had felt like I had had up to that date. And I totally just botched it because I didn't honor the fact that my time and energy for my craft 
was more important than drinking wine. So the two things totally conflicted and taught me like, what do I prioritize? Um, and, uh, um, you know, I, I had kind of like flubbed on lines in there and just remembered their eyes looking at me and feeling my face turn red and not having control over the room. And it's a really, really icky feeling, but it, if it happens enough, you learn to make friends with that uncomfortability and eventually you learn how to navigate that uncomfortability if it rises again. And you have to be uh, okay to fail. It's like you have to Absolutely. be, it makes you a better artist. So that's a great story. Okay, um, the last one. And then I'm sorry, everybody, there's just so many of you, but I, I want to say Alyssa Matias. I'm going to unmute you. There you go, Alyssa Matias. Love you. Say your name. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Hi, Alyssa. Um, I, share, I share an account with my friend Kaylee, Gavin X. Chloe. Oh, yeah. What's up? Your guys' account is great. Thank you for making that. Hi. He's on the phone. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Hi. I, I had a question. Um, I wanted to know, like, what was your favorite scene to shoot? Ever in Sabrina? Yeah. Oh, man. There's some days that are so fun. I loved when we were filming the Hair Moon episode. I loved, like, Honestly, like that was my favorite episode to film, Alyssa, because we were, we all looked so cool in that, like in those white clothes, you know, and, and we were out in that location that we shoot on reminds me of home. Like it reminds me of where we're shooting right now. And I'm sure that you've seen Chloe's YouTube videos and whatnot, right? So you've seen part of like Oregon and whatnot. Like it's, it's so beautiful. And there's this location that we filmed that during the hair moon. Um, and it was like near a goat farm and there were like, there was like a donkey and chickens and it just felt like we were home and there was so many of us on set for those days and there was a musical production and a big emotional scene like that that time of filming and it was still kind of early so it was like summer and warm it was so beautiful i loved loved that time thank you thank you Liz and kaylee for making that account my sister and i love it my mom always talks very highly of you guys' account excellent work so thank you for doing that Speaking of your sister and your mom, tell them I love them and I say hello. I miss them. Chloe has also will. done several shows for us and we just love and miss her. Um, because my OCD can't handle an odd number, even though it's great for a Sabrina thing, can we take one more question? <laughs> okay. okay, I've got my people here. Uh, Kaylee? Kaylee A? Hi. Hi, Kaylee. Oh, my question question is which part favorite part out of part one and four in Sabrina what's my favorite part out of one through four yeah oh he kind of just you just kind of answered that right mm, they're all so different Kaylee I don't know like part one I feel like there's this beautiful nostalgia of part one um, part two I felt like really dove into Nick Part three felt really like um, like deeper than all the other parts. And part four feels like this crazy whirlwind to me. And I, I don't know what to make of it yet because I haven't seen it. Those are my, those are, that's my opinion. That's where I'm at. Um, Gretchen just pulled up this little gem. It's a screenshot, so it's not, but look at Gavin in Peter Pan. He's like 14 <laughs> and somewhere around there. The little, oh, there he is. On his knee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to do it. He's just a little, a little, little. <laughs> man, we should post oh, I, that, man. I can't make you a. Yeah, we need to post. We need to post a video clip of that. Oh, yeah, GP did get it to you. Um, so while she's doing that, um, great question. But uh, okay, so we're going to move on to rapid fire questions in a second. But okay. we're. We're, oh, <laughs> he's right there, so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys, I ran into Tara Lynn Barr recently at an Oh audition. my gosh, yeah. So random. Oh wow. Oh, it was excellent. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so are you ready for some rapid fire goodness right now? Yeah, let's do this. Let's okay, do this go for it, Kyle. Let's do this. We gotta get our, our music going first because it's an important part of this. 
Bum, 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 bum. Did we lose, lose Kyle? We might have lost he's Kyle. Right no. He's right there. Oh, okay. he's right there. Kyle, I'm trying to unmute you. There he is. Well, no, don't unmute him. Oh. But Kyle, are you trying to? There we go. Yes. So turn it down just a little bit. Okay, if you had a spirit animal, what would it be? A white hawk. Yes. What's your favorite TV show? The Office. Any tattoos? Lots. <laughs> Best, like gift. Best gift you've ever received? Uh, love from my family. Oh. Well, that should be it. No. <laughs> if you had one superpower, what would it be? Uh, to chameleon, to like shapeshift, so I could play any role ever. Yes. What is the best thing that happened to you this month? This month, um, uh, tough arguments with my family. It's from the it's a lot of learning and growth and shit. Amazing. What's yeah. your favorite board game? Um, Yasi. Yeah. What special skills do you have on your resume? Um, uh, tumbling is one, maybe. Say it again? Tumbling, like doing Oh, tumbling, this. yeah, right, duh. Um, and then if you could teach one subject in school, what would it be? I um, don't. Um, I feel like you would teach sex education. No. It would, <laughs> actually, maybe. That's actually not a bad answer. Either that or, like, drama or literature or history. Oh, okay. But not, not math and definitely not science. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what's your favorite beverage? Um, Zevia's. What's your, uh, the compliment that sticks out highest in your mind that you've received? Oh, wow. I don't, oh. I don't know, I get, I get fueled better by the insults and the compliments, DJ. The compliments okay, I get you, I get you. So, yeah. ice cream or cake? Ice cream. Amen. Uh, what is one thing you what is one thing you still have from your childhood? Uh, my very first pair of shoes, they were Converse. Oh. High top Converse. Uh, favorite movie? Oh. Oh. That's such an awful question to ask an actor. It is. I never, I hate it when it's asked to me, but I have to, I have to ask. Favorite freaking movie? Um, I love There Will Be Blood. I, I love um, with Daniel Day-Lewis. I think Daniel Day-Lewis is a freaking legend. And, yeah. and so is Paul Dano. Um, I, I, I love Honey Boy, which is like a newer one that's been really lovely. And I keep resorting back to Shia LaBeouf and listening to his interviews about it because he's just a legend. Yeah. Um, I have too many, man. I, those are good. No, those are really, Lee really good. Valentine is great. Um, Eighth Grade is really amazing. Hereditary, like I yeah, can you're just, pulling out uh, some good films there. Um, yeah. Okay, last two questions because I okay. don't know two minutes because I don't read them fast enough, I guess. But <laughs> no, have, my rapid this fire. is another one that was kept getting posted in the um, chat a lot. Was do you have anything from the set? Did you take anything from the set or? What yeah, I don't know why I took this. I took a ball bearing. Like it's the most boring thing that I could have possibly taken home. <laughs> it was just on set. It was the last day that we were on set, and I was like, I didn't take anything really from home, from set, and so I just grabbed this little ball bearing because I was like, I don't want to grab anything that they're gonna miss, so I'm just gonna take this. Um, I also do have the shirt that uh, my character wore during the Hair Moon Festival. Um, I wore it for our pirate party here. It's a good shirt. Fun. Um, and then lastly. What and uh, what could you what could we do today to make uh, this Friday even more fantastical? Oh man, you know I think I think the best little thing to do you got to give what you're looking for. So I think to whatever you can do to make this day better is to give the thing that you're looking for. So if you're looking for attention from your mom, then give your mom attention. If you're looking for you know, a tickle fight with your dad, then have it, then t start tickling him. You know what I mean? Like, y whatever you're looking for, give that very thing. I think that's how you can make this day. Maybe you gotta, better. you you put out what you receive. That is, or that's you, just you, you see what you put out. The reverse that's of that. Anyway, amen. You guys, a huge virtual round of applause for this incredible, incredible. <laughs>
amazing. Uh, it was an honor to have you, sir. And so glad to um, see your face and tell your family how much I love him and I say hello. Um, if you all um, don't follow him on social media, which I think is highly unlikely, please do so <laughs> um, because he puts out some great content. If you don't follow us on social media, do that. We're doing things like this literally six day, five, five days a week, six classes a day. Uh, we have um, the original cast of Grease the movie coming on next week in a, in a, you know, in a seat watching a show on stage, on camera, whatever it is. We hope you all stay safe, you stay sane, you stay healthy, and uh, we are so thankful that you spent your time with us, uh, spent time with us here today. So again, thank you, Gavin. We love you. You can all unmute yourselves and say hello and thank you as well. I love you so much. Gavin, I miss you. Oh my God, Jill's here. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 I just wanted to say, though, today, thank, I just wanted to thank you too, man. Like, for people doing stuff like this and keeping things alive and being able to have conversations about art and keep spirits and passions high, it was a beautiful thing. Thank you. So thank you for, for doing this and continue to do it. And everyone tune in to watch more. There's so much to learn. There's so many people teaching different things. There's tap happening and auditions happening. And like a lot of great. Barely. We'll be back on soon, okay? <laughs> you have to come like co host something with me. That'd be super fun. All right, all right. We love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. The thought of the day.